I'm going to go in there and think, okay, what's the shape-ish? I've got an angle on one side that's kind of like that. Something like that. I'm using my biggest brush. If you're doing a really detailed um, image, then you might want to spend more time drawing. But I just want to um, demonstrate kind of laying things in. Now, I'm going to put this in really thin. So I'm pushing my brush. And I went, my color on the palette might have been a little darker than I needed, but I know I'm working on a white surface, and the minute I start pushing it in, it's going to get lighter than I need it to be. Okay. So I'm, I'm just starting the shape, pushing it in. It's got a little bit of walnut alkyd. Now, I'm just going to kind of measure how tall is it versus how wide is it. I'm always getting relationships between things. So if I, if I have this, you know, let's say that's about three quarters as wide as it is tall here. Let me see. Take the height. Oh, no. It's got to be quite a bit taller because this is about two-thirds-ish as wide as it is tall. I'm roughly doing that. I'm just trying to figure out how tall is it, it, a rough ratio. I'm not trying to get perfect on it. You guys, if you're if you're doing a perfect, beautiful um, drawing, then you, um, sorry, if you're doing a perfect detailed image, you'd want to spend more time on the drawing, but I just want to kind of rough it out here a little bit. Notice how I'm holding my brush right now. Overhand, just, I just want to throw that paint in there. I do, I'm not trying to, to be perfect. Just a smidge taller ish. So, clean off my palette knife after I've mixed the color. Take that big brush, push and wiggle it into that color. Nice and big. And what's nice is it kind of cuts that lighthouse right about where the light is. Now, whether I was painting a pear or um, water or whatever it is, I want to simplify the shapes. I'm going in and using really rough, messy strokes and just throwing it in to start really loose. I'm not obsessing about this yet because I'm sculpting with the paint. I just want to get the big shapes first and then I'll go in and refine them. And then I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna worry about this bottom for this demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly throw it in as some um, messy looking greens. Blue plus yellow makes a happy looking green that's not usually found completely in nature. So I always add a little bit of brown or orange to it. Just kind of rough it up a smidge. And notice I'm not painting all the leaves. I'm just kind of getting the idea of where the leaves are going to go. And then I can paint all the tiny little highlighted leaves later. I'm squinting my eyes just to kind of get an idea of where they, they will be. Okay, I want to get rid of all the white before I start my second layer on this particular painting. That doesn't make it the right way to do it, it's just what I'm deciding to do. I think that makes life a little easier. So I'm going to get rid of the white first. So I'm going to start up at the top. Okay, now all these lines are thicker than they need to be. I always paint everything a little bigger than it needs to be because it's the first layer and I can carve into it. So that background of the lighthouse, I'm going to take my, my watercolor and just add a little bit of green to it for the color in here. And that's where I might start to get a little bit thicker with the paint. This might even become a second layer now because I'm going to be overlapping those lines a bit, okay? So I'm going to take the paint and I'm going to have to mix a new color because all this has... Um, walnut alkyd, and I've just made the choice not to use the walnut alkyd. I'm going to make this a second layer. I'm going to wipe off my walnut alkyd, turn and wiggle it. Now, if I've mixed with my brush, I'm naturally going to have more paint on the brush. I've got to wipe that brush off. So I'm going to push and wiggle it again now, push and wiggle it, and then just wipe into it so that the paint is on there, but it's not thick and goopy, 
but it's thicker than it was here. All right, now, what to do when the whole thing is wet? I can't put my pinky on the canvas to steady my hand. One of the things you can do is take your brush, any old, uh, any brush other than the one that you're using. You can also buy what they call a mall stick, but I just use a brush. And now I can rest my hand on that as I go. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna ignore the horizontal lines. I might paint those on top layer. So now this paint is a little thicker than I, paint used, I used before. So it will sit on top, but I still gotta wipe it off and load more every brush or two every brush stroke or two, and then wipe it off. I'm squinting as I look to see the shapes. I want this side to be thicker. So I'm gonna make that line a little wider. So I turn my brush to get a thinner line or a thicker line. I like this filbert because it's got the thin edge and a thick edge when I turn it, but it's also got a slightly rounded top. And if I want to be a perfectionist about it, I can take my time. Take your time. I'm doing a demo quickly because I just want to show you the principles I'm talking about. But if you're painting, don't rush it. Take your time. All of this, when I squint my eyes, it's lightest in the middle and it's more orangey at the top and less orangey at the bottom. I've got to clean off my brush. I'm going to kind of try and mix that color. It's kind of like yellow with a tiny bit of red, mostly yellow, some white. For that orangey color at the top, I'm going to start there. The bottom is a little more grayish, so maybe I'll go and get some gray and mix in a little bit of my orange with it for that bottom area. And I'm going to come down to meet it, but I might leave that little hole where I know I want it to be a little bit more yellowy. I'm going to start with that, um, some of these bands and the, the windows. They're going to be a little darker, so if I want them just really dark, just mix brown and blue together and then you can lighten or darken as needed. And it layers on top nicely because it's thicker. squinting to see still some darker areas any of these things that I put in the beginning any of these dark areas they're gonna look lighter now that I'm pu putting in some second and third layers on top because they were kind of see-through so they kind of faded away so I have to go back in and reestablish some of my darks bit by bit The, the more detail I put in, little by little, is when the painting starts to come together and stop looking so cartoony. So it's about not giving up and seeing, seeing that, you know, you're just going to keep refining and keep refining. If you see an area in shadow that looks kind of bluish, oops, and look what I just did. I took the brush, I didn't wipe it off, and I pushed it. And what I did is I wiped off paint. Pull the brush. Don't push it. That gray, remember before I did it really thinned down with the paint, but I can go in a little thicker now and thicken up some of those areas and actually put the paint down a little thicker. Again, I have to wipe it off every so often and get more paint because this edge especially, I want to be a little, little darker. And there'll be some highlights in there too, but I just want to keep this a little darker to start. And I can darken up my my blacks as well. So even though I painted all those blacks in there, now they feel like they're disappearing. I can go back. It's a lot of back and forth and relationships. I'm also looking at the direction of my brushwork. If I see a little ledge, I put my brush in the direction of that ledge, not just straight up and down, but I'm being a little more thoughtful about my brushwork now. So I've got the blue with a little bit of brown and I accidentally mixed some yellow in, but I don't mind it. So I'm gonna keep that. I gotta mix a nice big batch because as I'm layering, I've gotta get thicker with the paint. I can leave some of that background to show through. So again, it's about the layering. So thicker paint now, and it doesn't have to be quite that thick, push and wiggle and then pull and go around. And now I'm gonna kind of follow carefully around the outside edge and watch this, you guys. See the outside edge of this? I just made it a line. I want it to have a little more definition so I can go in there and carve into it. 
Even though it was just a line going straight up, I can make it have a ledge. But as soon as I do it, I've got to go back in and reload my brush because I'm going to pull into that dark gray. And I wasn't worried about making it a perfect edge. Meaning, you know, I'm not worried about that being a perfect angle. I just want to get the impression of it coming in. Okay. So now I've painted around that. I can go in there with my water and kind of paint it on an angle or whatever. Get that water in. But same thing on the other side. I'm going to get my water color. The color I'm using for my water. And again, I'm going to go to the edge. Then I'm going to du duke in there. Come out. Come in. And just drag my arm down. I'm carving around the painting now, and I got to refine that that line. Came down on too much of an angle, so I'm going to have it come down a little steeper. And I can kind of go back and forth and make sure I refine that edge. Now, once I get all of this water painted in on top of that original sketchy area then I can go in with some of the lighter values and just add the hint of some highlighted passages as opposed to every little tiny dot of light in that water you can you can go to that detail but not for this particular exercise just think of big shapes squint your eyes and look at that water where does it feel really um, bumpy and light in places so right here light area then a patch of slightly darker value and then another patch of a slightly lighter color of that lightly lighter value sorry of that same color now the line between the water and the sky see how that's nice and blurry I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I can use that same brush to kind of soften that edge being careful not to push too hard. Or I could use this soft fluffy brush that I have. Any one of them will do. Actually, I've got this little one here. And I could use that to just kind of gently blur that edge so that it really helps push off into the distance too, just to blur it. But I can do it after the fact. Paint the color and the value you see first, then blur it. Okay, some of these details down here and in the light too. Let's do the light real quick and then some of the details down in the bottom. Just a few, just to show you how you could do those. For the light, for example, in the center I know it's almost pure white with just a tiny hint of that yellowy orange in it. Maybe just a tiny, a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to start there. And it's still white so I can still use it a little thinner to start. So I'm putting it in and I'm just going to kind of start to Blur the edge between it and some of those oranges around it, wiping off my brush as I do so. And I'm going to put some more of that orange in right here as well. Okay, so I just put in a lighter value and I kind of blurred the edges around it so that I get that glow, hopefully. We'll see, fingers crossed, of that orangey light. Now, thicker paint with that yellowy color, light yellow. I'm gonna go in and start painting it a little bit brighter, maybe a couple of lines in it, to start to give me that, hopefully, effect. If I need to get thicker with the orange, I feel like I still want some of that orange to really shine through a little brighter in places. I can go back over it. I can go back and forth and just kind of add any touches here and there. That's what this is about, is just going back in little by little. Okay, now, the trees down below. I just painted a mass of that green. There's going to be some darks and some lights, so I might start with my darks. I've got the blue and the yellow mixed together, more blue than yellow, and I'm going to mix some brown in with it for my dark area. So it's kind of got a, a, a brownish green. So I'm going to squint my eyes and look at my photo, squint really hard, and just look at where some of those dark areas are. I see a passage there. I see a passage that looks like a U shape right here. So kind of a yellowy, orangey, brownish color with maybe a touch of the green. We'll see. The best way to know, try it. If you don't like it, try a new color. Now I'm going to mix it a little thicker. And I'm going to be painting on top of other layers, especially when it goes on top of some of those dark um, 
areas that I painted a little thicker before. Now the key with greens, I get a lot of people who say greens are hard to paint. I don't understand what they're talking about. All color is hard to mix, frankly. It's all hard. Mm -hmm. So the key is just have different values, some lighter, some darker, maybe some more orangey, you know, in my greens and some more kind of um, yellowy, maybe some more greenish. If I vary it up, so there's some like orangey patches in my greens, there's some yellowy patches in my greens and there's some really greeny greenies in my greens. If I wanted to put in any thick, like, you know, those little, some of those little sparkles, I might put in a few. See how I can, if I barely skip the brush across, see how I get those little dry brush marks? I might do some of that on top, but that's like the thick last layer. If you want to blur those, you can use, if you have a glove on, your fingers. Or you can also use paper towel, or you can use a brush to kind of blur them up a little bit. So let's say I wanted to try and put in some of the crossbars on the windows or even some of this detail like in that fence around that um, the lantern of the or the lamp of the lighthouse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about or making my paint fatter. So fat over lean, right? So if I eat a lot of really oily, greasy things, I'm going to get fatter. So I think about that with my painting too. First layers are thinner, I don't use as much oil and such, but as I'm getting fatter on top of those layers, I can fatten it up with a little oil. So that might be where I wanna have some of my clean walnut oil that I can mix in as a medium with my paint. Okay, there's two, two ways I can do this. Actually, there's probably more than two ways, but there's two ways I'm gonna show you how to do this. One of them is I'm gonna use a little brush and I'm gonna to attempt to paint it, and the other is I'm gonna show you how to use palette knife to paint, okay? so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix my color first. I'm gonna make like kind of a dark, kind of my black with the, that brown and that blue. So I'm just gonna mix that up. Maybe add a little tiny bit of white just to lighten it up a smidge so it's not black, so it's not as gar garish. And now I'm just gonna put a, a little tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of walnut oil into it. I don't want too much. I'm just gonna throw my palette knife in there. And just grab a dot of it and mix it in. So just like I did with the Al Kid, but now I'm using walnut oil instead. So it's the oil. So it makes it oilier, it makes it fatter. Okay. I'm gonna take my, my little brush and I'm just gonna push and wiggle and pull that brush through that mix. Okay, so it's an oilier paint. Here we go. Wish me luck. Okay. You can see as I start to move, I'm pulling the paint. So I gotta wipe it off. And again, go in. This is a really wet area here. I won't be able to mess with it too much. I can just place in the line. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. If it's broken, that's okay. 
But this is a way that I can go in and I can create some of those little lines. And I'm getting shakier as I get older, so my lines might be shaky, but that's okay. It's a painting. Okay. So that's one way to do it. I can use a brush and make the paint oilier. And again, I have to I have to lay it down like this, not like this. I've got to lay it down parallel to the canvas. Now, conversely, I could use a palette knife. Now, I only brought this one. You can buy all kinds of palette knives, small, big, you know, rounded edges. So you can use those to paint with too. Um, I'm gonna use this palette knife. Now, this one's kind of a triangular edge. Maybe this edge is perfect width for that wide part here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this bottom edge of that palette knife and I'm gonna drag one edge. For me, I like to use the edge that's farthest away from my body. So for me, it's this edge here because then I can just lay it down there and let it go. I'm gonna drag as much as I need. So if I need a long line, I can drag that whole edge through a wide patch of my gray. So I might have to make that wider. If I just need a little tiny line, I could just make a skinny or just go to the very edge and just drag a little bit so I just have a quarter inch line instead. So I got that whole edge. I've got a little bead of the paint on it. You can see it's got a little bump on it, but it doesn't fill the whole bottom edge. Done. And that just gives me a nice little line. I just pressed it. It's not a perfect line. It might have some bumps, but that's okay. That gives me a darker line than this, right? Because the, the paintbrush is dragging, whereas this is just pressing and laying on top. So same thing if I want a light highlight, like white, let's say over here on this edge, you know, those same bars are lit on the other edge. Now, I only have maybe a little tiny quarter to half inch line that I need to make. So now that I've made that white, I need to make sure that that line that I'm, I pull, like a quarter inch or however long I want that line to be, it's shorter than the, than the dark line was. Can you see that? So I'll go to where I want it to be. Okay, something like that. And just lay it in. Now I've got the highlighted edge of that railing. Maybe I'll have it connect over here a little bit. Now, the one benefit of working in a really wet painting like this is if I want to sign my painting, I think signing your work is the hardest thing there is to do. Uh -huh. it, it is for me. So when it's still wet, I can do this. Oh, just the handle. Because I didn't, to I didn't tone my surface, I can carve out my signature with the handle of my brush. And there you go. Now it's signed. Done. <laughs> but you can't do that. When